show you how to make a rocket stove. With a rocket stove, you'll be able to cook a full meal just with a handful of twigs. Sticks that you can find anywhere, any kind of debris, paper, you name it. If it burns, it can cook your meal. First of all, the most important item is this can right here. It's about a five gallon can. I picked this up at a Japanese food restaurant nearby. The second item you're gonna need is some stove pipe. This is four inch stove pipe. The stove pipe is four inches across. You'll need a straight long piece and an elbow piece. And you will need one tin can. So now let's talk about what tools you need. First of all, most importantly, you're going to need a set of gloves. Some kind of leather glove, something to protect your hands because we're going to be cutting steel. It's very sharp and it's very dangerous. I've cut myself a number of times working with these things. You're going to need a pencil, a knife, a serrated knife. I like the serrated knives that have very tight serrated edges here because they cut through the tin much easier. You're going to need a chisel to start your holes. And one of the most important tools, this is a tin snip or metal cutters. You need a hammer and a brush to clean up with. Before I begin making it, I want to let you know where I found out how to do this. Um, this is Capturing Heat. It's released by Apervecho, Apervecho Research Center. And inside of it, there are plans for a Winarski rocket stove. The first thing you're going to want to do is take your pencil and draw outlines where we're going to make the cuts. Take your elbow and pick a side of the rocket stove that's going to be the front. It doesn't really matter because usually they're all the same size, but you just pick a side and plan out where you're going to cut the hole. You want the hole to be about an inch or so away from the bottom. You don't want it too low or else it'll get the bottom really hot when it cooks. And you don't want it too high because you want the maximum amount of space to go for the chimney. So it doesn't really matter exactly where, but I'm going to pick about an inch from the bottom, maybe about there, just because it fits in with this nice little box here. And I'm going to draw a circle all the way around it. We have a faint circle. You'll need the hammer and chisel to begin the hole. Once a hole is created, you take your tin snips and you get them in there and you start to cut around the line you just made. It's good to actually be on the inside of the circle a little bit so that way it's tight enough to hold the stove pipe. first hole's been cut. The other important thing is that your can needs to have a lid. The lid's actually important to hold the top part of the chimney. One thing you're going to need for this, which I forgot to mention, is a file. Take your file and go along the edges of the can wearing down all the points, sharp edges. So, Take a long piece of stove pipe, get your measuring tape. As you notice, there's two sides, a crimp side and a non-crimp side. From the crimp side, you want to measure four inches. Take your pencil and make a mark. Take something straight and continue that mark all the way around. You can just eye it. it, doesn't have to be exact. 
all the way around the pipe. Open up your pipe and take your tin snips and cut all the way around it. As my wife just mentioned, wear your gloves. helps to lift this side up as you cut it. With your piece cut, snap it all together. Like so. So you have a small round piece. Take your file and go around the edges again. With the edge smooth and safe, you test it to see if it fits inside the hole. Take a little off the edges so it's too tight. There we go. Fits in rather snug. Perfect. And there you have the opening to the rocket stove. The four inch piece of stove pipe is inserted into the can with the crimped edge towards the inside. The elbow goes over top of it with the crimp side coming up. The next step after you have your elbow in place is you measure out five inches of the long stove pipe to cut. And just like before, when you go around the whole length of stovepipe. Once again, take your tin snips and cut. And once again, wear your gloves. <laughs> Once the piece is cut, you snap it together. Take your file and file the edge. Once this piece is finished, take out your elbow and fit it over top of the crimped edge. With the full stove pipe in place, you can see that it rests about an inch below the top of the can. With this kind of lid that goes over top of it like this, what we're going to have to do is cut the outside edge off. You'll need to take one of your pieces of stovepipe out. In this case, we're going to use the front of the elbow. You lay it down on top of your lid in the center and draw a circle around the edge. In our case, there is already a circle here. Once again, we take our chisel and hammer to start the hole. Once you have a hole, you take your tin snips, put them in and cut around it. <laughs> 